All right, welcome folks. I wanna talk about orbits and their relationship to stabilizers and the orbit stabilizer theorem, which we'll see for real in our next video. So G is going to be a group of permutations of a set S. So think of G as the group of rotations of this cube and S might be the set of faces. And every time I rotate the cube, I map you know, one face onto the other. So this rotation might map the right face onto the front face. So that's how we're thinking of this group of rotations as permuting the set of faces of the cube. So for each element i in our set, so for each face, for example, the orbit of this face under the group action is the set of all faces that it can be mapped to, okay? Where you can map by, by applying any group element, any rotation that you want. So a remark is that the orbit is a subset of S. It's a subset of the faces, okay? The orbit of a face is all of the faces you could map to. The stabilizer of a face is instead a subset of G. The stabilizer was all of the group elements, all of the rotations that fixed that face. So these live in different spaces. The orbit of an element is, is living in the set. The orbit of a face is a collection of faces. The stabilizer of, a, of I is living inside the group. It's all the group elements that fix that element or here, rotations that fix that face. Let's go to this example from our last video. So let G be the following subgroup of permutations of eight elements. So we're gonna have six permutations, the identity, and then five more. We computed the stabilizers of a couple different elements. Those were the group, group members that fixed that particular element. So our stabilizer of seven was these different group elements that all fixed seven. So now here, let's find the orbits of these elements. So let's find the orbit of one Let's find the orbit of two, the orbit of four, and the orbit of seven. So where can one get mapped? The identity just maps one to one, okay? But that's somewhere that one can be mapped. Here, one gets mapped to three. So let's add that to our list. Here, one gets mapped to three. Here, one gets mapped to two. Let's add that. Here, one gets mapped to two, and here, one gets mapped to one. So the places one can get mapped are one, three, and two. Notice these are elements of our set. These are just numbers from one up to eight, right? Whereas a stabilizer was group elements, permutations. What's the orbit of two? Two can get mapped to itself by the identity. And then here, two can get mapped to one. Two here gets mapped to one, two gets mapped to three. That's another spot two can get mapped. And then two can get mapped to three or two, two. What's the orbit of four? Four can get mapped to four or two, six. Again to six, but four could also get mapped to five. And that's it. 
um, forest still gets mapped to five or to itself. Okay. And then the pattern is going to be slightly different for seven. Where are the various places seven could get mapped? So the identity maps seven to itself. We could also map seven to eight. This maps seven to itself, seven to itself, seven gets mapped to eight, and seven gets mapped to eight. Okay, so the important observation that you want to make here is the following. If you take the size of a stabilizer and multiply it by the size of the corresponding orbit, you always get the size of the group. Okay, so when I look at element one, the stabilizer had two elements, the orbit had three elements, and two times three is the size of the group, six. That repeated itself for the element two. I had two times three was equal to six, and that repeated itself for the element four. I had two times three is equal to six. For the element seven, our stabilizer had a different size. It had size three and the orbit had a different size, it had size two. But still, three times two is equal to the size of the group, six. So that is going to be the um, orbit stabilizer theorem that we'll state and discuss in our uh, next video. It says that for a, a group of permutations acting on a set, if you picked any element you want in your set, then the size of the stabilizer times the size of the orbit is always equal to the size of the group. Case in point, rotational symmetries of the cube. It turns out that there's 24 rotational symmetries. And how might you count that? Well, any rotation of the cube can be thought of permuting the faces, right? This rotation maps the right face to the top face. So if I want to size, if I want to count the size of this group of rotations, pick any element, any face that these rotations are commuting. Let's pick the right face, okay? What's the size of the stabilizer? The size of the stabilizer is four because there's four group elements that map the right face to itself. What's the size of the orbit? The size of the orbit is six because there's six different faces that I could map the right face onto. And so the size of the entire group of rotational symmetries is gonna be four, the size of the stabilizer, times six, the size of the orbit, which here is four times six or 24 uh, rotational symmetries of the cube. I'll end there. Any public questions? All right, thanks.